Hi, it's Dwyer, April 2nd, 2024. We're getting this video out well before the Usyk Fury fight, right? Let's debut a new concept here. We'll call it If I Rule the World, right? I'm going to give you my take. What's really important here is your take in the comment section of this YouTube video, and you can take this dialogue wherever you want to go. Right now, I was thinking about ring walks, and we've had some great ring walks in history, right? But I believe this fight between Fury and Usyk really deserves a certain tone. I believe Tyson Fury is in a position that very few in the sport have been in before this fight, right? The only other guy I could really think of who has been in this position would be Ali, right? Um, understand Ali for the Liston rematch is booed entering the ring, right? He, of course, had changed his name. Uh, people were upset. Uh, people you know, thought something wasn't on the up and up because Sonny Liston, of course, hung out at casinos and had some mob friends. Um, also, the Ali who fights Joe Fraser, right? Understand, that guy enters the ring unbeaten, just as both of these guys are about to, right? Usyk and Fury. And that guy was controversial, and a lot of people thought that that guy should be in prison. Right? A lot of people thought that guy was not authentic, was not legit. Well, let me just point out, believe it or not, Tyson Fury is in that position right now. Outside of the prison part, there's no draft division claim against him. But just understand, uh, there are many who doubt him. If you see him, if you watch the fights and... You actually see his game. You think he's one of the best heavyweights you've ever seen. But understand, there's that other side of the ledger. Right? Anthony Joshua points out that when he fights the guys who Fury has fought, the difference between the two men is those guys go the distance against Tyson Fury. They don't go the distance against Anthony Joshua. Right? A lot of people, too, are doubting Fury because of that. Francis and Ganu fight, right? The feeling is, you got to be kidding me. A guy in his first pro fight is not only knocking you down, but he's competitive with you, right? Several former fighters believe that Tyson Fury lost that fight. So I believe the ring walk here has to be a certain way. Look, I know in the real world, these fighters will pick whatever song they want. To enter the ring with. <laughs> right? I mean, obviously these guys deserve it. Tyson Fury should pick his song and run with it. Usyk should pick his song and run with it. But what I want Tyson Fury to do is to think over the head of the fans. Right? Uh, understand, some of the best ring walks I've seen have been over the head of the fans. Now, let me pivot here for a moment. Let's talk about some great ring walks. I have some of them in my favorites folder right now. Right? The Nassim Hamed. He really is a major pioneer in this field. His fight against Wayne McCullough, that's a great wing walk. Understand it was so unusual at the time. I want people to listen to the commentary. Right? The commentators felt a need to explain the ring walk. Nas comes in to Michael Jackson's Thriller, right? Different era. I would say Canelo's ring walk before his fight against John Ryder. Folks, that's a king returning home, right? They have pyrotechnics uh, in the arena. They have pyrotechnics outside the arena. Uh, that's a dramatic theatrical ring walk. You've had some famous ethnic ring walks, right? Understand, life was different in the early 80s. Jerry Cooney looked like he was going to mow down the heavyweight division. He was the first white guy in a while, 
who looked like he was going to take a hold of the title for years. Right? People thought Larry Holmes was afraid to fight Jerry Cooney. Now, if you were alive during the 1980s, hell, forget the 80s. If you were alive in the 70s, let's date ourselves. You remember Ain't No Stopping Us Now. That was really a racial anthem. If you disagree, tell us about it in the comment section. Right, but Ain't No Stopping Us Now by McFadden and Whitehead was really a racial anthem. So, of course, Larry Holmes, then the heavyweight champ, unbeaten, as was Cooney, comes in to Ain't No Stopping Us Now, and the Holmes team is jogging into the ring. They wanted to send a message, and this is over the head of the fans. They wanted to send a message, hey, we're not afraid. Larry's not avoiding Jerry Cooney. We're eager to get in the ring. Right? You have some political statements shortly after 9-11 in New York City. You had a fight, Felix Trinidad against Bernard Hopkins. And Trinidad comes in, he's wearing the Puerto Rican colors, right? The crowd is heavily Puerto Rican. And Trinidad, in one of the best moves, again, I believe it was over the head of the fans, is wearing a New York policeman's cap, right? If you were around during 9-11, you knew those were emotional times. I get goosebumps just thinking about that ring entrance, right? Let me just say, too, the Klitschko brothers, put together some great ring entrances. Vladimir Klitschko's ring entrance against Eddie Chambers is certainly a legendary uh, ring entrance. His brother Vidley, to me, had the better ring entrances, right? Vidley has a ring entrance where he has holograms of former heavyweight champs, and they talk to you, right? George Foreman, Lennox Lewis, Evander Holifield, Mike Tyson, right? That's a glamorous, one of my favorite ring entrances ever. At the time, I saw that fight live, not in person at the arena, but on TV. And at the time, I thought, oh, this is off the chain. But let me tell you a story about a ring entrance that, to me, tops all of these, right? And it's not even my favorite ring entrance, on network TV, and I'm just telling you, the best fights happen so unexpectedly that they often, and I mean often, are not pay-per-view. So on network TV, Lennox Lewis was fighting a late replacement, a guy who was just like Sebastian Fundora, right? Vitaly Klitschko was training for someone else. Lennox Lewis was to fight Kirk Johnson. Understand, Kurt Johnson had to bow out. So, of course, Vitaly Klitschko in L.A. Vitaly Klitschko agrees to fight Lennox Lewis. Now, let me just tell you, I was watching on TV. And he comes in, and the crowd was disinterested. The crowd didn't know who the guy was. They were casual sports fans. Um, this wasn't a hardcore boxing crowd, right? Right? Vitaly Klitschko was treated like a late-minute replacement. Klitschko comes into the Eagles Hotel California. Right now, folks, if you're into, <laughs> if you're into soft rock from the 1970s, if you're into guitar solos, right, now to Joe Walsh, that is a perfect song. It was a perfect song for that moment. And Klitschko coming in with the crowd relatively silent, to this song, it was so off the chain, I can't even tell you. By the time the fight started, you saw the first round, understand where Lennox Lewis was in his career. He had KO'd Mike Tyson, he had destroyed Michael Grant, who we took seriously at the time. Destroyed him. So Lewis, at this stage of his career, looks like in the early rounds, he's the most dangerous man on the planet. Right? That's who the heavyweight champ is. And in the early rounds of that fight, Vitaly Klitschko is in the pocket and he's throwing straight right hands. So, I go to work two days later. 
and another guy at work was into boxing. So we're talking about it. And let me just say, the other guy said, oh, did you see where Vitaly Klitschko entered to ring to the Hotel California? And both he and I were like, oh, because that was so obviously outside the range of what was expected, right? It was like if you heard the song as he entered the ring and saw his body language and he looked serious, that's one of the best ring walks in history. Now, my favorite ring walks personally, and it's just a style that fit the guy, was Marvin Hagler's ring walks, where he would show up, his corner looked hardcore East Coast. He was East Coast, Massachusetts in the building, right? Worcester, Massachusetts, Rocky Marciano country. And Hagler would walk in. I don't even remember there being any music. Hagler's group would walk in as if they were catching a bus, right? Hagler wasn't even interested in the crowd. It was all business, right? It was like a hitman walking into a diner to pump a few shots and then just walking out as everyone's panicking, right? And that's who Hagler was. You know, Hagler was all business. Well, let's talk about this fight. If I rule the world, if I'm advising Tyson Fury, all I can say is, look, so many people doubt Tyson Fury. Understand, if he wins this fight, in my opinion, he's the best of his generation. Right? I understand there's the Anthony Joshua crowd out there and they want to crack at him and stuff like that. But just to understand, he's been at it so long. He's in his mid-30s now. That if he answers the call here and dispatches a guy who beat Joshua twice, a guy who, you know, is unbeaten, period, as a pro, a former Olympic gold medalist, if Fury dispatches Usyk here, right, even the skeptics will have to say, okay, he beat Deontay Wilder multiple times, and now here he is taking out Usyk after, of course, earning the title against the then-active, not inactive, Vladimir Klitschko in Klitschko's backyard. Klitschko was fighting out of Germany. So what I want Tyson Fury to consider is to dispatch with all the well-intended, big-time theatrical productions that fighters have put on in the past, right? I don't want to hear Hell's Bells, uh, Vitaly Klitschko's uh, anthem song. I don't want to see a lot of exploding things and stuff like that. What I want for Tyson Fury, and this is if I rule the world, and I concede Fury should play whatever he wants, right? But what Tyson Fury should consider is that he really is an Ali figure. In other words, there are those who believe he's the best ever, right? That they haven't seen a guy this big, what is he, 6'9", with this set of tools, who can actually step in the pocket and fight an in-the-pocket fight if he needs to, right? So given the doubters, I believe that Tyson Fury here needs to pull a Vitaly Klitschko Hotel California type situation go over the heads of the fans in the arena. This is for history, not the moment. This isn't, you know, Sweet Caroline where you're trying to get the crowd amped up and stuff like that. No, 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 no. You want a different tone. You want a guy coming in and sending a message. So people watching the pay-per-view at home understand the message immediately. So 15 years from now, we're looking at the ring walk and we're remembering the moment. So the song I want, if I rule the world, the song I would have Tyson Fury enter the ring to is Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes featuring a young Teddy Pendergrass. 
right? Harry, Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes is, if you don't know me by now, right, folks, the wording matches up with the event. The message is simply, look, I've been here, right? You know me. You know who I am. And that's the heavyweight champion of the world, right? That's the song I want him to enter the ring to. I don't want fireworks. I don't want him trying to ingratiate himself with the fans. No, the message has to be different, right? Look at Ali entering the ring for the Liston rematch. The message has to be, look, man, I've been the best. I've done great things. If you don't know me by now, you will never ever know me. Let me also point out too that I don't want some remake. I don't want Simply Red. No, no, this is a Harold Melvin and the Blue Note song. I want the original. Because of course, Tyson Fury is an original. Let me point out too, he has reason to be pissed. Now the line has readjusted. And I do believe, style-wise, he's in for the fight of his life. I do believe that. Right? But just understand, there's a moment here where Alexander Usyk was the favorite in the fight. <laughs> you know, many people, many people are doubting Tyson Fury to the point where many believe he lost to Francis Ngannou. So this is a moment in his career where he gets an opportunity to make a statement. Don't put a smiley face on it. I don't want to see any fireworks in the arena or outside the arena. Don't approach it as a king returning home or as a king anything. Right? Let the fans know, if you don't know me by now, you will never ever know me. Right? I'm just telling you, Ali had a contentious relationship with the boxing establishment in the 1960s right contentious it's now the 2020s right folks whether we realize it or not this is an Ali figure let me just point out too Fury unbeaten as I make this video Ali had car crashes right not in the 60s he leaves the 60s unbeaten but let's remember the 70s, Joe Lewis, excuse me, Joe Fraser beats him. Kenny Norton breaks his jaw, beats him, right? Ali had problems, ends up losing to Leon Spinks, right? Later in life gets embarrassed by Larry Holmes, right? But Ali had setbacks. Tyson Fury at this stage has been able to win his setbacks. Right, that first Deontay Wilder fight, that disastrous 12th round, think about it. If he just stays on his feet, if that's a 10-9 round, he wins the fight. No, this is reckless Tyson Fury, right? What's he doing? He's within range of Deontay Wilder's right hand in that 12th round. The Francis Ngannou fight, folks, even I feel that he had to win the ninth and 10th rounds of that fight to get the win against a guy who's a Pete Rademacher type, right? Fighting for the heavyweight title his first fight out. And so people are doubting Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury's tone entering the ring shouldn't be don't worry, be happy. Shouldn't be celebrate me. No, it should be a, if you don't know me by now, you will never, ever know me, right? If he wins the fight, then great. You know, his critics are just going to have to deal with it. But my own preference, and tell us yours in the comment section of this video, right? My own preference is, hey, come in the ring, let the song linger in the air, let half the crowd ask themselves, why is he playing this song, right? I'm just telling you, the crowd that sees Tyson Fury right now is going to be singing full-throated on the song. 
Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. I hope you leave them in the comment section of this YouTube video. I believe Usyk is the betting side of the play. Right? Even I am on the other side of that song where, you know, if he said to me, if you don't know me by now, you will never, ever know me. My response would be, hey, what happened in that Steve Cunningham fight? Right? But let's just say it's appropriate here to come in somber, have this song ringing, have your corner look like Hagler's corner. All business. We have a job to do. We have a hit we need to make on someone here before we leave the building. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. And please visit my favorites folder here on YouTube. You'll see some of the better ring entrances in fight history. Thanks for stopping by.